The anti-science bandwagon goes into overdrive this week over the word creator. This is Genesis Week. And a welcome to this episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program of creationary commentary and analysis on news, views, and events pertaining to the Origins controversy, made possible by you, the supporters of CORE Ottawa. The show of choice for intellectuals who believe their brains were intelligently designed. Airing right across Canada on the Miracle Channel, all over the world via Roku on the Genesis Science Network, and of course on the Christianima Network on YouTube. Excellence in pirate broadcasting, we set up our studios in the old Soviet military space station 8 Tango, where a Nigerian astronaut Abak Tunde has been stranded since 1990. He kindly set, helped us set up the studio, so we chipped in $20 towards his Get Home Fund. Remember, if you get lost in cyberspace, you can always find us at genesisweek.com, where you can find all of our shows and even subscribe to our YouTube channel and get extras like Crevo Rants and full interviews with our guests. I'm your host. Ian Juby. This past week, the anti-science community, and I don't use that term lightly, went into high gear balking at a paper published by Plus One that dared to use the word creator. Oh, I'm going to unapologetically use a lot of very strong words here, and believe me, I'm restraining myself from using the adjectives that really come to mind. This story provides an excellent example of the irrational, illogical, hypocritical, childish prejudice, and open, flagrant bigotry in academia towards anyone who dares to question Darwin, let alone dares to mention a creator. Back on January 5th, Zhang et al. published a paper in PLOS One entitled Biomechanical Characteristics of Hand Coordination in grasping activities of daily living. It was a very unpretentious paper discussing the construction of the human hand, the authors being involved in prosthetics and robotics. So this is right up my alley, and the subject of the paper is a subject I'll be going over with the students in my online robotics course. It's extremely difficult to mimic the design of the human hand. The authors were simply exploring the connection between the complex biomechanical architecture of the human hand and the actual coordination of that hand by the tendons which snake all over the place through the wrist and other places in the hand, not to mention the human nervous system which includes not just control signals but exquisite feedback. This system is astonishingly complex and the authors were particularly interested in where the tendons ran. What would happen, for instance, if you ran the tendons in a different place on the hand wrist assembly, uh, still with the same freedom of movement that ours has? All the authors did was have a number of people conduct basic life skill use of their hands, studied the behavior, and tried to apply the lessons learned to the design of multifunction robotic hands. Basically, they conclude that the hand overall and the routing of the tendons was a very good design, and thus we should imitate that design in our robotic hand designs because it works so well. But then they made the fateful statements in the abstract of the paper. The explicit functional link indicates that the biomechanical characteristic of tendinous connective architecture between muscles and articulations is the proper design by the creator to perform a multitude of daily tasks in a comfortable way. Rot row. <laughs> now, before I go on, I wish to define a few words. I'm just going to buy the online dictionary, dictionary.reference.com, for the following definitions. Bigotry, noun. Stubborn and complete intolerance of any creed, belief, or opinion that differs from one's own. Prejudice, noun. Unreasonable feelings, opinions, or attitudes, especially of a hostile nature, regarding an ethnic, racial, social, or religious group. Childish, adjective. Puerile, weak, silly. 
And for those of you who need to look up the dictionary definition of a word used in the dictionary definition of a word, <laughs> puerile means childishly foolish. Yeah, I know, I know. That's circu a circular definition. Don't look at me, I didn't write the dictionary. So, two months after this paper comes out, the anti-science bandwagon, and that's what I'll call them as they are certainly opposing science by their behavior, the anti-science bandwagon finally notices this paper that was published, which dared to use the word creator in it. Oh no! Twitterites went hog wild with ridiculous comments, like Simon MD. Thanks, Plus One, for feeding arguments to those who say open access equals lower quality. The Creator Gate article is a harmful disgrace. Deanna Hendert Hernandez, PhD, tweeted, What a fail of the peer review process. James McKinnerty wrote, Plus One is now a joke. Proper design of the creator? Absolute joke of a journal. Really? How is this study a disgrace? How is it a failure of the peer review process? How is it a joke? They studied how well the human hand works and how we should employ such design characteristics in robotic hands for those who have no hands. Seems like a pretty noble paper to me. How are your comments not completely intolerant of any creed, belief, or opinion that differs from your own? How are your comments not unreasonable feelings, hostile in nature, regarding an ethnic, racial, or social religious group? How are your comments not puerile, weak, and silly? But it gets better. The editors of Plus One then got wind of this paper, a paper that had gone through peer review and published two months prior. And so Sanchez tweeted, just found out Plus One published a paper with evidence about some creator. If not retracted immediately, I will resign as editor. <laughs> well, first of all, Mr. Sanchez, myself and numerous others wholeheartedly support your decision as you have just demonstrated yourself completely unworthy to review any scientific papers. You just said that you will reject a paper out of hand without even reading the content, simply because you think it will support the idea of a creator. This is obvious because you clearly did not read the paper that you threatened to resign over. The paper didn't offer proof of a creator. Others claiming to be reviewers for Plus One also chimed in in the comments section of the paper online. As a scientist as well as a Plus One academic editor and author, I feel outraged by the publication of this manuscript making explicit reference to creationism. This is an extremely serious issue for which the academic editor who handled the paper, as well as the journal, besides the authors themselves, should be blamed. I feel my scientific reputation to be put at risk by this incredible mistake. So should this paper not be retracted as soon as possible, I will be compelled to resign from my position of plus one academic editor. Moreover, I am determined to avoid taking on any further assignment until this issue is fully solved. The article should be retracted and the handling editor should be dismissed. As an editor for this journal, I am appalled. I am ashamed that the journal staff, the editor responsible for the paper, the reviewers, all ignored this more than obvious red flag resulting on a creationist argument embedded on a scientific paper. I will consider resigning unless exemplary actions are taken by PLUS. Well, first of all, I have a simple message to these people. GROW UP! <laughs> you think you're defending science, but you are not. You are destroying science. Such comments and behavior is open, flagrant bigotry and prejudice. Why do I say that? Because these people obviously didn't even read the paper they were so childishly reacting to. The paper was not creationist in any way, and in fact referred to the evolution of the human hand. Now, if you still don't think this is all bigotry and blind prejudice, then let's reword the paper just subtly, replacing the offending word. The explicit functional link indicates that the biomechanical characteristic of tendinous connective architecture between muscles and articulations is the proper design by Mother Nature to perform a multitude of daily tasks in a comfortable way. Would there have been the uproar there was over such a statement? Of course not. 
and the paper itself and its very valid scientific conclusions would still be standing today and not retracted. Because there was no scientific problems with the paper nor its conclusions. Notice the paper was not retracted for scientific reasons. In fact, let's say the paper was talking about a robotic hand that the authors were studying and they said, the explicit functional link indicates that the biomechanical characteristics of tendinous connective architecture between muscles and articulations is the proper design by the creator to perform a multitude of daily tasks in a comfortable way. Again, there would be no problem because the scientific conclusions are quite correct and accurate. The robotic hand clearly had a creator, but daring to discuss the human hand after which the robotic hand was designed, but pales in complexity by comparison, but a human hand? Oh no, 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 no. That cannot be a creator. Now I would say that it's childish to claim that a robotic hand did not have a creator, <laughs> but the reality is even children recognize intelligent design when they see it. Children recognize that a robotic hand must have a creator. The critics are being childish, but not in this way. So how is it somehow intellectual to claim the human hand, after which the robotic hand is so crudely designed, had no creator? It's anti-intellectual. It's denying the obvious. It's personal delusion. The critics are also being hypocritical. Why haven't these people whined on Twitter and screamed for a retraction of Isaac Newton's Principia, where he pointedly wrote, the most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. A heavenly master governs all the world as sovereign of the universe. We are astonished at him by the reason of his perfection. We honor him and fall down before him because of his unlimited power. From blind physical necessity, which is always and everywhere the same, no variety adhering to time and place could evolve and all variety of created objects which represent order and life in the universe could happen only by the willful reasoning of its original creator, whom I call the Lord God. For that matter, we should withdraw the writings of Charles Darwin, who wrote of the creator God so often that C. Cosins was inspired to write a paper entitled, Was Darwin a Creationist? You hypocrites! You dare to criticize plus one! the Chinese authors who clearly intended a completely different message than what you've criticized them for, and yet you embrace the writings of a fanatic like Darwin who wrote lots about the Creator and even credited that Creator God with many things. This whole dust-up obviously has nothing to do with science and everything to do with people trying desperately to run away from the Creator God you know full well exists. In the end, Plus One did in fact issue a formal retraction of the paper, and the reviewer of the paper resigned. Their formal retraction read, Following publication, readers raised concerns about language in the article that makes references to a creator, and about the overall rationale and findings of the study. Consequently, the Plus One editors consider that the work cannot be relied upon and retract this publication cannot be relied upon because they used the word creator? There wasn't a thing wrong with the paper. Plus one bowed to peer pressure. Add one more example to the many of the open flagrant bigotry in academia, folks. This has nothing to do with science and everything to do with people not wanting even the mere mention of the creator God. It's ironic and appropriate that the authors of the paper were Chinese. Several years back, an eminent Chinese scientist visiting the United States said, In China, we can criticize Darwin, but not the government. In America, you can criticize the government, but not Darwin. The anti-science lynch mob regularly screams that creationists don't publish in peer-reviewed journals. Besides being an outright lie, see Crevo Rant number 135, Peer Review and Creationists, this present case of blatant censorship is only one of a very many examples I can point to. If someone does publish a paper in a peer-reviewed journal that's allegedly supportive of creation, a firestorm ensues and the publisher bows to peer pressure, not peer review, as the paper had already passed peer review. 
So really what the anti-science lynch mob should be saying is that creation scientists don't publish in peer pressured journals. This is not science, this is anti-science. And all of the critics I have quoted here have demonstrated their anti-science stance, rejecting science out of hand, when they obviously didn't even read the paper. And they even just think that it might hint at a creator. Well, folks, like it or not, you are going to face that creator and you are going to give an account for your life. Uh, give an account for everything you've done. You know, things like openly criticize people for mentioning that creator. Ruining their careers for mentioning that creator. Pressuring peer-reviewed journals to deny that creator. I'll be there. I'll see you on that day, and I'm curious to see what you have to say for yourself. I know what I'm going to say to the creator on that day. How about you? Judgment day is coming soon. Do-da, do-da. Judgment day is coming soon. Oh, do-da day. Okay, enough of that. Stick around. We'll be back in just one minute. Now, in its second edition, Chronicles of Dinosauria is a beautiful coffee table reader that is sure to provoke fascinating discussions amongst all ages. Chronicles of Dinosauria takes the reader from creation to modern times from the perspective of the great reptiles and presents compelling evidence that dinosaurs and man lived together, just like the Bible says. In scrapbook style, author David Wetzel presents the biblical, historical, and fossil evidence with photos and beautiful drawings by artist Richard Dobbs. See evidence that humans are found in the fossil record right back to the time of the dinosaurs. The book culminates with fresh research into modern-day reports of dinosaurs living in remote areas like Papua New Guinea and the rainforests of Cameroon. You can get your own beautiful hardcover copy for only $16.99 plus shipping by going to genesispark.com or from any of the major online booksellers. for me? Hmm. Hmm. Brian wrote in from London, Ontario. Hi Ian, I'm wondering if you know of anyone who has ever done radiometric dating of the strata in contact with polystrate fossils. With respect to how they form, there is some hand-waving going on there on the part of the scientific community at large, but what we can agree on now is that they were buried in a short period of time. It would be interesting to test the layers from bottom to top to see what kind of spread you get. It's convenient for them to say that these layers formed quickly, but all the others formed slowly. Thanks for writing in, Brian. The polystrate fossils Brian is referring to are fossils which are buried upright in the rock record and cut through multiple layers of rock. The word polystrate is a conjunction of poly, meaning many, and straight for the strata of rock that they cut through. They are polystrate fossils cutting through many layers of rock. Now, usually these are fossil plants, often cutting through tens of feet of rock. We are taught that rock layers unequivocally mean time. But obviously the top of the plant is not going to stick around for even tens of years, let alone thousands or millions, while slow and gradual geological processes bury the plant. And it's not just plants either. Sometimes the polystrate fossil is an animal. Advocates of deep time will call these fossil plants in situ, which is a misleading term. In situ means it was buried where it grew which is a belief and far from fact. This belief was first proposed in the 1800s by the lawyer Sir Charles Lyell, who applied his legal training in argumentation to geology to try to convince the world that deep time was the story to be believed and not the biblical history of a worldwide flood. Now, while this was a good legal tactic, it could hardly be called good science. Lyell's belief is easily demonstrated to be flat out dead wrong. As geologist Harold Coffin wrote back in 1969 
In his peer-reviewed paper in Creation Research Society Quarterly, the polystrate fossil plants of Joggins, Nova Scotia were allochthonous, that is, ripped up by a flood, transported by that flood, and buried in what is now the fossil cliffs of Joggins. He presented 10 lines of evidence demonstrating this fact and reiterated them in his book, Origin by Design, where you can see, for instance, some of the fossil plants were even buried upside down. It was the fossil plants of Joggins, Nova Scotia that inspired Lyell's in situ theory that the plants were buried where and as they grew. Now, I checked. Plants don't grow upside down very well at all. Trust me on this, I speak from my vast gardening experience. In my own peer-reviewed paper, which was included in a collection of papers compiled into the book, Rock Solid Answers, I repeated Coffin's observations, as well as the observations of geologist John Mackay. All three of us have documented multiple reasons the polystrate plants of the Joggins Formation were allochthonous, including missing roots from the roots and rootlets from the plants, uh, more upside-down fossil plants, etc. Skeptics have criticized the term polystrate, saying that the only people who use that term were creationists. In my paper, I argued that the term in situ should be absolutely abandoned because it is not only completely and demonstrably untrue, it is downright deceptive, misleading the observer away from the truth of the matter as it carries the necessary connotation that the plant was buried where it grew. The term polystrate is accurate and true, even if the fossil plant was actually buried in situ. Thus, I will only ever use that term polystrate because it's the correct term. Brian is quite correct when he talks about hand-waving by the advocates of deep time. When you point to rock layers containing these polystrate fossils, they agree that those were catastrophic burial. Of course they were. Yet they will then turn around and point to rock layers which are different in only one regard. They lack polystrate fossils. And the deep time advocates will then adamantly claim those rock layers represent millions of years. Even though there is zero difference between those layers, allegedly millions of years old, and the ones containing polystrate fossils. Let us not also forget, polystrate fossil formations are huge. The Joggins Formation alone represents some 20,000 vertical feet or over 6,000 vertical meters of rock layers. And I also question just how many rock layers there is around the world which do not contain polystrate fossils. So Brian asked if perhaps radio dating had been conducted on any rock layers in contact with polystrate fo fossils. I am personally not aware of any, except of course for carbon-14 dating. Uh, I doubt that anyone anywhere has applied rock dating methods to rocks with polystrate fossils for multiple reasons. Uh, first of all, there is the hand waving going on you referred to. Uh, the deep time advocates would not argue that polystrate fossils took millions of years. So they wouldn't be trying to date the rock layers. Furthermore, because polystrate fossils are in sedimentary rock, and sedimentary rock is composed of a mixture of other older rocks broken down into sand and re-cemented into new rock, you can't rock date sedimentary layers. Uh, depending on, on the grain of sand you selected, you would get different ages because it's all different rock making up that rock. And that age would be of the original rock, not the time the sedimentary rock was formed. Uh, this is why typically lava rock and volcanic tufts are only datable by rock dating methods. Lavas and volcanic tufts are a whole other ball game, uh, even though they do sometimes uh, have intact fossil trees buried within them, uh, such as what's seen in the massive Columbia River basalts. Yes, the lavas are in layers, but no one is really arguing so much for deep time between those layers. However, there are other ways to date uh, sedimentary rock layers, at least relative to each other, with regards to polystrate fossils. For example, as I pointed out in my paper, the Joggins fossils, all 20,000 vertical feet of sedimentary layers, were rapidly buried within a short time frame. The plants, after burial, were all bent, distorted and twisted during the major tectonic upheaval on the East Coast that formed the mountains and tilted all the sedimentary layers of Joggins to the south. All 20,000 vertical feet of sedimentary layers were laid down in rapid succession. Then the mountain building event occurred on the east coast, all before the buried plants had a chance to rot 
or turn into coal. The plants, which are now turned to fragile coal, were still soft and pliable at the time. Basically, the buried plants were still green when the entire East Coast underwent massive shifting with mountain building. There was no millions of years involved here. If we had a watery event today that laid down 20,000 vertical feet of sediments, burying plants within those layers, then the continent rapidly moving and building mountains all within such a short time that those buried plants stayed preserved in a green state, we would call that event a worldwide flood. It also becomes immediately obvious that if such an event happened on the east coast of Canada, such an event would also impact the rest of the world. 20,000 vertical feet of rapidly deposited sediments on the east coast of Canada would also mean simultaneous massive sedimentary and fossil deposits on the west coast and even inland in all of North America, which of course is what we find. The advocates of those layers, the advocates of deep time, just like to argue that those layers took millions of years. Hogwash. The entire rock record was laid down in one massive short event. Carbon-14 tests were conducted on coal samples from the Joggins Formation at a different location than the Joggins Fossil Cliffs, but the same formation. I personally collected the sample for the research. The fact that we can carbon date those fossils to be less than a few tens of thousands of years tells us that the alleged 300 million years attributed to the Joggins Fossil Cliffs is pure fiction. Those millions of years simply do not exist, and carbon-14 dating proves it. So as you can see, polystreet fossils are powerful evidence of the worldwide flood of Noah. Thanks for writing in and inspiring this brief rant here, Brian. I hope that answers your question. All right, I have to call that a wrap. I'm your host, Ian Juby. I hope you'll join me again next Genesis Week. Hopefully we'll survive re-entry, though the Soviet space technology has been quite impressive, I must say. Remember, you can send us your comments, questions, hate mail, and round-trip tickets for two to Jamaica to us in a number of ways. You can email us at comments at genesisweek.com or you can send us a tweet at Genesis Week. Or you can head on over to genesisweek.com, find the most recent show, and post a comment there. Or you can go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash genesisweektv. Remember those words of warning from our Creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. We'll see you on the flip side. We are a viewer-supported program and need your support to keep this program on the air. Please pray for us, and if you wish to financially support the program, Canadians can make a tax-deductible donation to CORE Ottawa, Canada North Post Office Box 72075, Ottawa, Ontario, K2K 2P4. While we cannot offer tax-deductible receipts outside of Canada, donors wishing to financially support the program can do so online at ianjuby.org donations, and thank you for your support. Thank you.